It's time now to take a look at what's making headlines in today's newspapers. We're joined by Alison Sargent for that. Alison, going to start uh, to get the latest reactions to the escalating violence in Myanmar. That's right. Uh, Myanmar's pro-democracy paper, the Irrawaddy, uh, talks about another bloody day on Wednesday. Uh, dozens of unarmed civilians were shot dead by police firing live rounds. The paper reports 28 in their headline. Uh, we now know that number to be even higher, at least 38 people killed. Now, the Irrawaddy's founding editor-in-chief has written an op-ed advising the international community how to make sure the military coup in Myanmar fails. Uh, Aung Sa's main message is that it is important not to lend any legitimacy to the military. Military. Uh, he has really tough words here for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. He calls them pathetic and irrelevant. Uh, and he says activists in Myanmar call ASEAN a FASEAN and explains that FA literally means prostitute, uh, but can also mean cover up or shield. Uh, among his suggestions for action uh, are for the UN to explicitly reject any regime uh, supported, um, regime appointed ambassador. Uh, he also says the US should appoint a special envoy, uh, envoy or send a delegation. Uh, he says it's an opportunity for the Biden administration to really engage regional allies. Okay, let's move over to Australia now, where the country's attorney general revealed that he is the subject of a rape accusation that dates back quite a number of years. That's right. This rape allegation that actually came out last week amid sort of a larger Me Too reckoning in Australia's uh, political sphere. Initially, uh, it was an unnamed, an unnamed minister, uh, but as we read on the front page of the Australian attorney general, Christian Porter uh, identified himself and came forward on Wednesday. Uh, he denied the accusation in this emotional press conference. Uh, we see, he said in this headline, uh, I was just a boy, I did not rape her. Now, this case uh, does date back to 33 years ago when Porter and the alleged victim were both teenagers. Uh, the woman actually committed suicide uh, last year after coming forward to police. Uh, police have since determined that there was not enough evidence to continue investigating this case. Uh, the Australian, which is a conservative paper uh, owned by Rupert Murdoch, uh, they write that this case is unresolvable, and they lament the fact here that Christian Porter, they say, will have to live with, quote, a cloud over his character. Hmm. Yeah, because despite police not pursuing the case, this is clearly calls for some kind of government investigation. Yeah, the political editor of the Sydney Morning Herald is calling a foreign independent government investigation, uh, not of the rape claims since, quote, he says that's impossible, uh, but an inquiry into whether Porter is, quote, a fit and proper person to hold such a high office uh, in the face of such a grave accusation. Uh, the paper's political editor uh, is very critical of the Prime Minister Scott Morrison's response response to all of this. Uh, he summarizes it in this article as uh, go into hiding, go into denial, send the minister away on leave and wait for the whole thing to blow over. Uh, and we see uh, the denial sort of represented in this cartoon by Matt Golding for The Age. Uh, the prime minister says, I take Christian Porter at his word. And the accuser, a journalist asks, and the prime minister replies, well, I didn't read her words. Mm, interesting symbol on the shirt there as well in that cartoon. Mm. Uh, let's move to the UK there and news that the Queen has ordered an inquiry into allegations that Meghan Markle bullied staff members while she was at the palace. That's right. I'm not going to go into the details uh, of these allegations. They were first published uh, earlier this week in The Times. Uh, as papers are noting today, what's really remarkable is that these accusations have been acknowledged and are being investigated by the royal family. Uh, as left-wing tabloid The Daily Mirror describes it, there's an all-out war taking place at the palace, uh, and it comes as an interview of Harry and Meghan conducted by Oprah is set to air um, in the UK on Monday and in the US on um Sorry, in the U.S. on Sunday and in the U.K. on Monday. Uh, it's expected to be pretty explosive. And so as the royal family sort of braces for this, uh, the couple says that they are becoming the victims of a smear campaign. I have to say the way that this has played out uh, in the press, that seems kind of a, a legitimate um, argument from them. Now, the tabloid The Star sums this up as a card game called Unhappy Families on their front page. Uh, they depict Meghan Markle as Mrs. Shy, uh, Harry as Mr. Grumpy, and then the Queen is Mrs. Uh, we could do without all of this right now, although I have to ask uh, if we could do without all of this right now, well then maybe why is she launching this investigation? 
Well, let's move on to something I hope is a bit lighter than all of that. Alison, uh, you've spotted some stories about dramatic cat rescues. That's right, Eve. The first one is from Reuters news agency. They call it the perfect rescue. Uh, members of the Thai Navy saved four cats that were found trapped on a sinking ship. Uh, Reuters reports the Navy was sent to check for an oil spill, but then they discovered that a few crew members, i.e. the cats, uh, had been left behind. Uh, I really love this photo. You can see uh, he carried the cats on his back uh, to the rescue boat. Uh, the, Navy, the Navy officers that rescued the cats are now taking care of them, so it seems like maybe this is a love story as well. Um, the next story about cats is from The Guardian. In this case, the heroes were workers at London's Euston train station. Uh, they noticed a tabby cat curled up on the roof of a train that was set to leave for Manchester. I like The Guardian's headline, too. A cat on a fast train roof. Uh, passengers were transferred to another train with only a slight delay leaving. Uh, meanwhile, the, the train station staff spent two and a half hours uh, coaxing this cat to get off the train and come down. Uh, according to The Guardian, they described it as swaggering off into the night as though it had other places to be. And the paper says it is still a mystery as to how this cat got onto the top of the train in the first place. Yeah, one does wonder. I like that sub-headline there. He was a whisker away from a, <laughs> a very fast ride. Alison Sargent, thanks a lot for that look at the international papers. Time for us to take a quick break now, but we're back with more updates in just a few minutes, so do stay with us. <laughs> 